In this video, we'll introduce the method of separation of variables for solving partial differential equations by going through an example illustrating the method. So we'll consider the following problem. We, we're interested in knowing the steady state heat distribution on a rectangular plate with dimensions L by H given the following boundary conditions. So when X is equal to zero for any Y, uh, the heat distribution is equal to zero. Similarly, for y is equal to zero and any x, for y is equal to h and any x. But then on one of the sides of the rectangle, you have a different heat distribution that's some general function of y, which we want specified. So what this looks like, something like this. So we have or plate. And I guess before going further, uh, you should recognize this as uh, a Dirichlet problem as introduced in the previous video, because we're given uh, the values of u at the boundaries of our plate. So our plate has dimensions L by H. If we define a, system, a coordinate system like this. So X goes that way and Y goes that way, positive Y goes that way. We're told that when X is equal to uh, zero and for any Y, so along this side of the plate over here, U is equal to zero. And that's this condition over here. We're told that when y is equal to zero and any x, so along this side of the plate over here, u is also equal to zero from this condition over here. When y is equal to h and any x, so along this side of the plate over here, u is also equal to zero from this condition here. And then finally, along this side of the plate. So when X is equal to L and any Y, this is some function of Y. And the steady state heat distribution is given by Laplace's equation, which in two dimensional Cartesian coordinates can be written out like this. So we wanna solve this partial differential equation subject to these boundary conditions. And this will give us the heat distribution within this plate. And the usually the first line of attack for this type of problem is to assume that the solution is separable. So what that means is we assume that the heat distribution, which is some function of X and Y, its X dependence is completely separate from its Y dependence. So there's no connection between the heat distribution along X and the heat distribution along Y. And you may wonder why it's fair to assume this type of solution. It seems a little bit dubious. Uh, and there's a few reasons. One of them is given our boundary conditions over here, it seems reasonable to assume that the behavior of X and Y is independent. Uh, because it doesn't, they don't depend on one another over here. The, uh, even though this is a function of Y, the heat distribution over here doesn't depend on the Y coordinate explicitly. The second reason is because this actually works. When you find uh, a solution like this to this type of problem and you go and do this experimentally, the solution you find actually matches 
what you measure. So experimentally, this seems to, uh, to be checked out. And ultimately, as we'll see later on, is the reason this works is because of the principle of superposition and some tools from Fourier series. Okay, so let's begin. The idea of assuming this type of solution is you want to transition from a partial differential equation to a set of ordinary differential equations, which we've already seen how to solve. So you take your assumed form of the solution and you plug it into your partial differential equation. So partial derivative of u with respect to x, because it's a partial derivative, you only need to differentiate uh, x. So y is essentially a constant. You only need to differentiate the x uh, dependencies. And because this is a single variable function, we can change from partial derivatives to ordinary derivatives. Similarly, for this term, any x dependencies are constant. And you're left with the ordinary derivative of the y dependency. And this is equal to zero as per our equation. From here, we need to simplify it a little bit to completely uncouple the x and y dependencies. And to do that, we're going to divide by u, which we're assuming has this form. And when you do that, you're left with this. So you have a term that only depends on x and you have a completely separate term that only depends on y. And if we rewrite this a little bit, bringing this over to the other side, We have that whatever capital X and capital Y are, they have to satisfy this condition. So the second derivative of X with respect to X divided by capital X has to equal by uh, to the negative of its analog in Y. And the key to this is to uh, note that the only way that two functions of different variables can be equal to one another is if they're equal to a constant. It, this quantity can depend on x at all because this quantity doesn't depend on x. Likewise, this can depend on y because this doesn't depend on y. So this has to equal to uh, some constant. And you normally need to decide on a sign for this constant, if it's uh, bigger than zero or smaller than zero. Uh, for this particular case, we're going to assume that the constant is bigger than zero uh, and see where that takes us. And you'll see that if you, if you guess incorrectly, you're going to get, uh, you're going to reach a dead end in your solution. So you need to go back and assume a different uh, value for your constant. Okay, so in the next video, we'll take this further and create two ordinary differential equations that we can solve and uh, begin building up our general solution uh, U of X and Y from our solutions for capital X and capital Y.